um, did his degree uh, in sociology and architecture, which uh, later on he moved to Netherlands to do his master's. And he worked for um, um, in Rotterdam. And uh, now I'll pass on to Wayne to let us know more. Okay, uh, thank you, Diksha, for arranging this and also to having us uh, for having us today uh, to share our work. Um, a brief introduction. Um, we're an international office, and today the work we're going to share with you, uh, mostly done in our Singapore and Shanghai studios. Uh, our work scope is quite diverse, uh, from TOD mixed use projects to headquarter offices to hospitality to cultural projects. Um, today's topic, um, as it was. It was given to us is ecology of communities. It's kind of abstract, so um, we try to understand what it means um, to us. And we find this very good quote actually from Diksha herself in our email exchange. Um, so she say, ecology of communities, which is about bringing people from different spheres of life, backgrounds, and environments, bring them together. So what does it mean for us as, as Spark, as an office? Um, perhaps we can start with our quite famous project, quite well known in, in Singapore and also in Southeast Asia, the Klaki uh, drinking place, basically. So um, it's a renovation project regeneration of an old pier uh, next to the Singapore River. So it's a nice design, we put a nice canopy on top and becomes a very popular icon and a place to be. So this canopy serves as a climatic control device and also with nice landscape, nice water features. Uh, and also nice engineering uh, to study the aerodynamics, how to move the air through the space, to cool down the space. So within, after we do all this, we do get a space that is maybe five, four degrees cooler than the outside. Um, but uh, recently we find out in the office, what we talk about most are not those architectural objects or, or technologies behind the project. It's more about how this place becomes a container of life and how people come together and uh, to meet people. Uh, really, we want this place, and it is now, it is true, I mean, not this year, but let's say before the COVID, it's really a place to bring different people together. So this, this is how we look at this um, topic of bringing different people together. So today we're going to share with you uh, some of the projects we did recently for the past maybe four or five years. Uh, with uh, several strategies, we can call it the Sparks Catalog of, um, of bringing people together. So let's start with the first one we call it, let's say, we welcome you with my open arms. So what does it mean? So um, we go back to a very old project in the office. It's almost, it's almost a seminal project when we talk about public space or, or shopping malls uh, in Asia. It's Vision City in Malaysia. So the site is in Malaysia. There's a semi-done mall when we approach it. So it's basically pretty en enclosed, um, not having much interaction with the, with the outside. So the first thing we did is we think we should break it. So we say break the box. So really from this very um, opaque facade, we make a big crack here. So to bring people in right to the heart. So from this to this. And then uh, with this terracing, uh, different landscape features, it slowly invites people, like opening with your open arms, bring people in to different levels, and also activate um, the, the upper level, fourth, fifth, from the ground all the way up. So perhaps this is our first approach, how we can create a community by welcoming you into our building instead of closing up our buildings. The second project is a build project, a similar approach uh, with a different side context. Uh, it's a triangular plot. If you look at it from far, uh, it's pretty typical. There's a tower sitting on top of a podium. Uh, but if you look at it closely, you can see that it is a very porous ground plane. From different directions, we study the connections. And then with these connections, uh, they are connected to different urban fabrics. So we bring people in all the way to the inside. By doing that, we break up the mall, and then we basically fold it inside out. So the atrium, uh, it's not enclosed, it's actually open, we flat to the outside. Uh, this is all, not only done in plan and also in section, you can see the atrium is open and then this on multiple level, we have different interfaces and they're all porous. So from the side, you can see not a solid facade, but a very porous facade, you can see the activities inside. And then on the ground plane, basically is also porous, you can infiltrate in without much 
uh, barriers. And then this not only happens on the ground, also on the second and third level. And then inside, we have this atrium. That's why we say it unfolds out to you. And then when you move up the escalator, you see this iconic, uh, let's say, a centri centerpiece to bring you together to create this community. Then the third project about this welcoming you uh, in the city is a creative park we're working on now uh, this year in Shanghai. This is an existing condition, as you can see. Uh, it's a pretty enclosed street corner. What we do again, you, we try to transform it. We try to open it up. Uh, the Nolly plan uh, drawn by Lolly of uh, the plan of room is probably the most uh, shared or referred plan in our office. It is drawn not only to show the building facade, but also to show you uh, what's inside, which space within the buildings that is actually public, you can go in. So with that concept, um, how you can infiltrate into different buildings, we opened up this creative park, we create this network uh, connected to the existing urban fabric, open the whole creative park up to try to create a new creative community. So first we opened up different entrances um, for the pedestrian at the important corners, or a new entrance portal for, for the cars. And then this will be uh, in the future, maybe we look like this. And then also we create new back streets, semi-open streets so they can blur the boundary between the in and the out. And then this notion carry on to the second and so, uh, to the second level, six, to the all, six, all the six levels of the building. And then when you go in from one of these entrances, you're welcome to go up and then to share your ideas with other creative people. So this is our first strategy, which is the court would welcome you with open arms, a uh, pretty city urban context. And um, the next strategy we want to introduce to you is we do respect context, uh, not only in cities, but also in more rural or suburban areas. Uh, we'll bring you to Malaysia. If you understand, or if you have any uh, encounter with the Southeast Asia low dense, residential development, you always see these kind of floor plans, um, endless rows and rows of housing. And then basically when you're at point A, there's no different from when you're at point B because what you see is the same. We try to not to use this approach to design this uh, new suburban residential plot. Uh, we try it, but we don't like it because we think the landscape um, can offer us much more uh, than just this tabula rasa approach. So we study, we scrutinize the landscape, uh, different terrains, and then we overlap them. Uh, this is actually the outcome at the back is our final master plan. You can see how we use the terrain to actually zone our master plan. Um, from studying the landscape, we can develop five different villages. We go through every one by one. And this, all these villages are uh, using this different terrain. When there's a steeper slope, we have a different typology. When it is a more gentle slope, we create another typology. The first uh, village we call it is the Garden Homes Village. This is a pretty gentle slope in the south, on the south side of the, of the project. So we can actually step it. Uh, you can see that we can create views, take advantage of this slope, and then we can create a very uh, inviting environment that even though you're from the very north side, you can still see to the far to enjoy the view of the sea view. Actually not the sea, but the lake view uh, in the south. So we develop topology, you can see that we staff it and the house itself respond to this landscape. The second village is a mansion, a little bit more steep uh, slope. So this allows us to put two rows in, uh, in the site and then a larger plot can be created. So with this, we take advantage of it, we cluster five to six units. And then inside, within this cluster, we can put different amenities. So again, use this typology of the terrain to generate typology of the houses. So this is something new to the market and we cluster them and they share the, uh, the facilities. As, as you can see, the rows follow the terrain and then it connects north and south side of the cluster. The next village, um, this is a very mixed use uh, residential project. So just now we talk about the garden homes and the mansions. Later we'll talk about the more affordable uh, terrace housing. And on the plateau, a more flat area on the high ground, uh, there are more, let's say, uh, high-end uh, bungalows or villas. Uh, usually they are again, they were arranged in linear uh, manner. But what we try to do is we create a center garden for each of the cluster. 
Uh, by doing that, each of the houses will have two facing, one facing facing the central garden and the other facing facing outside the road. And then with this arrangement, there is a car-free zone in the middle. People can share uh, their gardening, or their lives within this green hut. So again, we create this typology following the topography. And then you can see the dual facing of each of the bungalows or each of the villas with the road and with the garden. The next village we create with uh, the study of the terrain is this uh, more affordable terrace houses. Uh, more gentle slope allow us to put these row houses. We don't have enough space to create a garden, but then we can have linear gardens. So this dual facing this time becomes one side facing the road in the south and in the north we face this linear backlink gardens which tie all the communities together. And then the last village we create by studying the terrain is the low rise apartment is a collective housing. Uh, we discovered there are actually two valleys uh, in the site. With these two valleys, we can take advantage of it, uh, save our course on excavation. We can provide a parking uh, within this valley and on top we can build up our apartments. Also by doing this, we can create this multi, multiple ground uh, scenario so that um, when you're on top, you can actually see through and go and have a very porous uh, L1 or L2 and actually they're the B1 and B2 for the car park. So you can create something like this. So you have the housing um, surrounding a valley, a natural valley, and then we turn it into a landscape and also car parking. So with this, we can see um, how we create communities uh, by respecting the context, in this case, the geographical context. And from there, we create different typologies and with different typologies, we bring different people together in one neighborhood. The next one um, also is Respecting the context, um, we change a little bit the, the location. This is the Northern China uh, in, in between Beijing and Tianjin. This is a site. Um, this time is not only about geographical context, it's also about culture and heritage. Um, heritage, that is the background of it. So this site, this is our plot. Uh, the south side of it is more rough, uh, facing an existing highway. But if you look at the northeast side, you can see beautiful cluster of villages. And if you go to the east side, there's a very nice river uh, running through the site. So with this, we try to, again, respect the context, uh, look for the secret of this and see how we can develop it as a, as a cohesive and convincing master plan. So first, the three rivers that, that go through the site from north to south. And then we do a extensive research on each of the villages and try to find out which one we can preserve worth preserving and what to preserve. So with that, uh, we see oppor opportunity to turn some of the uh, villages to become our satellite town in this new master plan. So a build up of this process, so the, the villages, uh, existing villages, after our study, uh, this is our footprint, and then we decided to keep this number of villages. In the northeast, northwest, uh, these are more valuable and more uh, culturally strong uh, villages. We think we can keep them. And then in the southeast, we have a town, which is historic town next to the river. With that, uh, we understand the water flow and then we want to keep some of the water uh, characteristic. Um, very simple action. We create a green loop to tie all these small villages together. And then in the middle, we locate our future uh, high-speed train station. This will form the center and also form our north-south connection in the site. Having all this as the, as the base, then we can create this uh, multi uh, system, like a collection of villages uh, connected by one single strong identity of ring. So different programs can be programmed into the site following their original geographical and heritage character. This is a master plan. And if you look at it from a larger perspective, you can see that this is something very unique, not only for the past and also for the future. Uh, it is not an original or ordinary uh, grid development of a typical high-speed train master plan in China. So we introduce you from the center. Uh, just now we say we use a water feature, existing water flow of the river, and we create this, we maintain this water characteristic and create a new center. The center will be celebrated by this new location of the high-speed train, which we created as a landscape uh, to, to run side by side with the river. And then from there, you can see the new uh, 
water convention center. And then when you arrive from, from the train, this becomes a new branding because when you arrive, you see this water and this water is so central to the heritage of this piece of uh, cluster. And then towards the south, just now we say it's more rough condition. Uh, we can put more city type, urban type of buildings in the south and even move to the east, we take advantage of the meandering uh, river, the coastal area, so that we can put our heritage uh, center to celebrate it with the existence of the river uh, on this coastal village. And then towards the north, we keep the existing small scale building. We understand them, uh, we understand the fabric and turn it into a cultural center. And then to the northwest, we will keep those uh, very intriguing farming villages and turn them into uh, eco-friendly, eco-farms experience center, something like this. So again, by understanding the context, respecting the context, we try to create uh, ecologies of communities, bring people together. The next um, strategy we use, a uh, little bit change of scale. Uh, we do small things. We try to do small and precise interventions to catalyst change. Um, from there, we try to foster new communities. So the first example we want to share with you is Beach Hut. Um, if you know about Singapore, uh, you will know that the east coast of Singapore is facing the Pacific Ocean. And this is facing one of the biggest uh, South Pacific garbage patch um, directly, basically. From the east coast, you can see the Pacific. And then if you move further on, there's a lot of wasted ocean plastic there. Uh, HDPE is the most used and also most waste uh, plastic. If you recycle them, they do can turn into something very beautiful with a lot of colors. So how to use them uh, to animate this East Coast and also to, to have this intervention as a catalyst um, for people to formulate this community to, to understand the, the notion of plastic, weighting, weight, uh, plastic waste in the Pacific. This is a sketch by Stephen, our director. So we think maybe it's good to turn this plastic into a beach hut. A very simple hut clad by this recycled HDPE plastic panels, perforated, uh, wind can go through, uh, light can go through. At night, we turn into a lantern and just lift up from the ground so that you can see the sea at the same time, the ocean can look at it, look at this lantern at night and understand there's this message of ocean plastic waste. This is a forum, and from there we can have different colors. And then this little intervention will catalyst, catalyze uh, this uh, coastal community and try to form a new way of uh, understanding uh, of this ocean plastic waste issue. The next project, project about catalyzing um, changes is this big past toilet we developed uh, pretty recently, uh, about two years ago, and still uh, on an ongoing process. Um, we understand uh, from two years ago that 2.3 billion of people they actually have very limited access to basic sanitation facilities. And 1.1 billion of people, they have limited access to electricity. Um, through our research on these two topics, we understand we can actually do something very simple to catalyze change and then to foster new communities. This is an example in Nairobi, um, where an organization set up uh, some toilet, of course, and people go there to drop the excretion, and those excretion return to biogas, and those biogas will power shower facilities, uh, which is rare in the, in the neighborhood. And people actually go there to gather together uh, to, of course, to use the toilet and also to have a shower. And somehow this becomes a new way to create a community and also becomes a new way to bring people together. So from us, what can we do? Again, this is a sketch from Stephen, our director, and we tried to design a toilet, which is lightweight, good looking kind of enough to create this new center um, and to foster new communities. The design of the toilet is simple. We try to use it to create electricity. So on top uh, is the toilet itself, this brown area, and then below is this biogas tank. So um, the human excretion will go down, turn into biogas, and then we'll use this to generate electricity. And then if you have enough people visiting the toilet, you do can create enough electricity for you to run through the day. Um, simple structure, so a lightweight grips, and then 
we imagine we can apply local materials in any of those rural areas. Let's say if you have mud, you can apply on it so that it can stabilize, give some weight to the structure. Uh, you will sit there on the ground and then under it, you can transform, transfer uh, your excretion to the bio tank below. So simple method, a lightweight uh, uh, bio dome, and then you have the grid, uh, the rib structure, which is printed, and then you apply the mud on top, then you can get the spark toilet. With this um, design, which is very responding to the context and also uh, very precise to the question, uh, we try to promote this and to foster new communities uh, in different rural areas in India. This is an ongoing discussion uh, so far. Uh, we are discussing with different partners to see how we can prototype this project. Then the next strategy we try to bring people together is to mix different programs uh, vigorously. And also we call it, we mix it 24 seven, which means we just keep running all week and all day long. Uh, the project we want to illustrate here is the Guangzhou Shipyard Regeneration Project. Um, the site is in the west of Guangzhou. It's a very prominent site. Um, it is a site where ships has been built there for more than 100 years. And the scale is enormous. You can see here the slipway itself is about uh, 200 to 300 meters long. Uh, of course, it's a quite complex uh, master plan project. We have been working on it more, for more than a year. Uh, it's still ongoing. Um, we have to deal with all the zoning, uh, the pedestrian issues, the car traffic, uh, the vertical circulation of the people, different layering of different plots, uh, different layering of different plots going up and also going down underground, and also developing different types of connections uh, of different plots, the north and the south, in total, it's a 1.3 million of square meter to be planned. Uh, we have to study the road section. We have to understand how to arrange the cars so that we can give more space for the people uh, have pedestrianized streets. All these uh, end up with different typologies of buildings, uh, towers, streets, uh, connections, all sorts. But those, again, those are not our main concern, just like the Clarke project. Uh, we are more interested in how this space or place can continue life and can bring people together from all walks of life. So um, we have this concept from the very beginning of the project. We try to turn this into a destination, a destination which is not only for a particular group of people, not only for commercial people or not only for residential people, it's for everyone in the city. And also um, it's a destination which remember the history. So we try to turn the history into something uh, which can remind you of the past and also can organize the mixed use of the program. So how to do, the, how to do this? Um, we create a loop uh, in the master plan and we try to organize different functions uh, of the day and also of the week along this loop. The center of the site is actually a metro interchange, two metros we, we stop there. And then from there, we create our first center. And then from this center, we arrange all the functions in the form of a loop. All the programs that we arrange there, people go there, we visit it, and then every moment they see that we, we remind them of the history. At the same time, they're interconnected with different programs next to each other. So we start with the center first. That is the interchange of the plaza for the metro interchange. Um, each part of the project will start from the history, from the memory. So um, the form of this shape of the, of the plaza is being inspired uh, by the shipbuilding industry. So this boat form, uh, we can imagine it can be also turned into something quite significant in the urban context. So we can turn this boat form sitting in a dry dock into a huge uh, metro plaza. So people come out, imagine this is a Sunday or weekend uh, morning that you have your coffee there while you have a lot of public activities functioning. You have different levels of visual uh, connections with the city. And then um, at the same time, it serves the function of uh, city connection. It serves the function of a city uh, living room where the form of it, the stepping of it, and the 
and the idea behind this shape reminds you of the old dry dock for shipbuilding. At the same time, of course, learning from Clark Key just now, we, we talk about this can also be a climatic control and also sustainable canopy. And with all that, it's also a fun place to be so you can see this from a different perspective on the zip line. And then with all these serving the public, general public, for the office goers, this is also a very important interchange uh, traffic spot. And then at night, it turned into a drinking place for people to enjoy the landscape and also enjoy the public space. Another part, a big part of the, of the project is about the huge fabrication uh, spaces left over from the ship building industry. So how to transform this and make this part of the new city? Um, the, the use has changed previously, there are big open shed. Now we have to put in new towers for the new function. So this is our approach, we can turn them, um, uh, change them, change the scale, keep some old elements and then add them to the new towers. So from this, we can imagine we can create what we call heritage portal uh, which we can imagine during a weekend, uh, you can have your art jam in there. When the office is not working, then the street can be turned into pedestrianized space. And then you have this huge art plaza for people to gather. And this is the interior for the exterior. We can also imagine uh, how to mix this old heritage of the site, mix it with the old heritage of the city, which is this kind of South China type of building. So from there, we can create new exciting uh, event streets. The towers comes down with this huge scale. They are mitigate, mitigated with our uh, industrial portal, industrial art. But then on the other side, on the other side, we can have some uh, nice Yunnan style streetscape. And again, this memory of ship and boat can be turned into a office tower, the new innovate, innovation center of the entire plot. From there, um, you can create the skyline, uh, which is needed uh, to highlight the future, to highlight the, the future program of the city. At the same time, you can also produce specific triple height uh, sky garden for you to look back to the history, which is the dry dock we mentioned and also the sleepway we mentioned. So in the dry dock, we can use this boat uh, memory to create a new public space for the families so just now we have the office people and now we have another type of people coming into the, the story, which is the education of the future, education of the families. They can bring kids together uh, to gather here to learn about the history. And then on the slipway, you can create some new uh, buildings, uh, also using the idea of ship making and also form a new waterfront track for the people in the city. So if we combine all those together, um, we go back to what we say just now, it's a very vigorous mixed use project, 24-7, uh, old and new, different types of people who will bring all those together and contain here uh, with this physical construct, just like what we say in Clarky. It's a very complex project behind, but at the same time, what is important to us is to how to turn this place into a container of life and bring different people together. The last two, the last two um, uh, strategy, let's say, is about uh, people of different age. So we design uh, in the past few years, we designed for the aged people. We also design for the young people and they have different needs. And the important thing is to understand uh, their needs. The next project is a experimental project. It's a research project we did in the office. It's called Home Farm. So in the city center of Singapore, um, just situated. Uh, it all started from a piece of news that we actually understand now. Uh, adult diapers is actually outselling uh, baby diapers. And then, of course, this very acute issue of the aging population 20% of the population of Japan is over 65. And actually, in Singapore, we are approaching the same level. So, from there, we think should we create a new types of retirement housing technology uh, in itself? having everyone retiring in a tower, which is pretty segregating. So this would be an open area in a garden. Uh, you can see your friends. We have very good uh, visual connections in this place. So we try to understand what uh, the elderly, the aged people need. You basically need to be included 
we don't want to be alone. We don't want to be segregated. Uh, it is not an issue of one section of the population. It's about, uh, it's a cross uh, section issue. We want all kinds of support that you can get. You want your dignity, you want your identity. You don't want to be secluded from the main uh, society. So with all that uh, on the podium, we actually have different functions. We have a produce market, we have actually a kindergarten, we have a library, all kinds of facilities. And on top, we will put uh, different units, uh, not only those units for the elderly, but also units for other uh, demography, the younger people for their smaller apartments or the multi-generation people. So it's a mixture of residents. We stack them together. So just on the podium at the bottom, with all kinds of facilities and services on top are those um, apartments that we mentioned. And then we stack them in such a way that um, they are at a slightly inclined angle so that the angle can provide a good surface for some urban farming. Very simple aquaponic farming. So the fish tank can be on top and then provide the nutrients, the nutrients flow naturally via gravity. And then you can grow plants on this inclined facade. So with that, you can imagine you're now living in a uh, living garden, a productive garden. You can see your neighbor, you do feel the sense of community and you do feel the sense of uh, purpose. And nowadays, the elderly people, they're also usually active. So this is the perfect environment for them to have their retirement life. At the same time, it is a place for them to meet different types of people. The younger people coming to see the farm, the younger people living above them or below them. And at the same time, by doing this, we can also uh, fulfill some of their needs, maybe some kind of financial needs for their, for their rent, for their medical uh, bills by working part-time in this productive farm. So all together, we try to create these new typologies of retirement housing. So the last one, last strategy, um, we talk about we design for the aged, now we design for the, for the youth as well. For the young people, it's a very different group of people and they have very different needs. Uh, they grow, they change uh, constantly. So the first project we want to share with you is the Somerset Youth Space. Um, Diksha will know about Singapore and this, is, this project is in uh, Orchard. Uh, it is the last piece of the puzzle of the future youth master plan in the Somerset area. So it's right in the center. Uh, currently, it's actually a car park, as you can see here, with a lot of greens. So we try to keep all those green and transform the car park into a new youth plaza, a youth space. Um, it is, as we say, it is in the center, as a, as a nook of the future young people's uh, youth master plan. So when you arrive at our site, you actually link to all the uh, famous youth facilities in Singapore. The idea is very simple. As you say, we will try to grow and change together with the young people. So we took a very old concept uh, from the 60s, the Fun Palace by, by Cedric Price, uh, meaning we provide a very basic framework uh, to the site. And this framework allowed a lot of change and a, a lot of growth. Uh, very simple system on the floor is a technical floor, uh, which provided all the basic needs for electricity, water, and so on. And then we have a frame. This frame will, will be able to host different boxes. Those boxes will provide different functionality. In between them, there are several uh, interlayer of facade and spaces uh, to, to provide uh, different needs for different events. So let's go through them. Um, the outer facade, the one facing Somerset Road, the main road, uh, can be changed constantly. It can be light boxes, vertical greens. It can be digital screens. It can also be a thematic installation during different festivals. The inner facade, which is the one we support, which will support the, the main event space, uh, and the light boxes again, vertical green if there's like no event, like a normal plaza usage. And then when there's an event, it can change into a screen and we can provide sound system. And then when there's other functions, we can turn it into a thematic installation. On the ground, we provide internet, water, electricity, for all kinds of functions. And then you can also plug in different food trucks and installations. So with this system, with this system of change and growth, we can host um, 
all sorts of programs and all sorts of sizes of programs. Um, so let's say this week you have a food festival, next week maybe you have a e-sport tournament, and then you have Chinese New Year celebration, and perhaps you have a uh, Korean singer coming uh, to town. And of course you can connect this uh, with your phone, this auto interface, or in the interface in the street, there's also a digital interface. And then for the inner event space, you can imagine uh, you can host a concert, as we mentioned just now, or you can have your favorite e-sport team coming to town to have their tournament. For the outer zone, which is a linear event space, during the day, uh, maybe the afternoon, during summer holiday, it can be a place for the young people to hang out. At night, you can turn into a small cafe, uh, have your internet surfing there. And when there's an event, of course, it will turn into an event space. So having all this framework and all this plug-in of the activators, so basically it's a vibrant space, vibrant space, it grow and change together with the young people. The last project we are going to talk about today um, is a GRID, is a youth education commercial center. Uh, it is in Singapore and actually the Singapore office is quite excited about this project because uh, it's going to open soon. This is a site map of, of the project. Um, it's an intriguing site if you look at it. Um, it is in the middle of three schools. Um, within the building itself, is, there's actually a commercial school, Kaplan. And then to the south, there's a school of art, Sota. It's east, it's the Nafa. So three schools seems to be a very vibrant and uh, happy or youthful district. But if you look at the current facade of the, of the site, you can see actually it's pretty solid uh, and close. You don't have the vibe of, of a young people uh, place. So what we're trying to do in this project is to open up uh, existing facade uh, to give it a new identity, um, to bring, again, use the idea that um, perhaps the first strategy we say we're open to welcome you with our open arms. So we're trying to break it down and welcome people in uh, to be a new gathering place within this education community. So in the left, on the left is the old facade, which is pretty enclosed and perhaps lacking uh, some identity. On the right is our new facade. Uh, we pixelate it, as we say, we break it down and then we try to create a new icon. This pixelization is not only for the facade, it's also for you to come in. So this pixel under it, there's a social stairs, we open it up. There's a new way to enter the mall. Um, just now we say to the south of our site is a, is a SOTA, which is a big art school. So this axis follow the axis and bring people into our site and then they go all the way to our new gathering place. First, we will be welcomed by a social stairs. Uh, at the back here, you can see the SOTA, which is a pretty enclosed facade but they do have an access here with student going to passing through. So that's access now will be directed uh, into our mall, our educational youthful mall uh, through this social stair. Uh, from there you go in and then you will see different uh, new openings. And this porosity or this opening up is not only to the west, uh, south side of the mall, also to the east side of the mall. This side is facing the main street, which, you, which will bring you to Napa and other schools. Uh, from the old start, which is again pretty enclosed, we'll open it up to create a new entrance, uh, just suck you in to, to, to the inside for interactions. And then this originally quite dead space uh, will be activated because just now we say we welcome you with this social stairs, bring you down to the basement, which was origin, originally quite stagnant. And now it can be a new gathering place. And we also open up a little bit and bring in some new visibilities for different levels. And then the other thing is we try to, um, this image is not very clear, but we also try to open up new uh, atriums. So you can see here the existing atrium, we also open up a new atrium at the back to create more uh, visual and physical interactions. And the existing, the tallest atrium we turn into an art, art wall. Um, you can actually express yourself uh, on this new atrium wall. The project itself, since it is a youth project, uh, 
budget is limited, but uh, we try to create something more exciting uh, in every opportunities that we can see. So the lighting, we can use them uh, to create some exciting moments, something like these. And of course, also for the toilets, it's also a good way to express our identity uh, with very bold graphics. So we use them uh, to become the new icon uh, of the site. And again, um, perhaps when you go to the toilet, it's also a good chance maybe for you to socialize with your friends. So we open it up also, not only for the mall, but also open it up for the toilets. Uh, for the outside, we have a social basin. So you can actually uh, to chat with your friends, uh, maybe meet some new friends from your school uh, when you're washing your hands. So it is almost opening. So this are uh, our client and also Stephen, our director. And as you can see, so just now at the beginning, we say it is a quite a youthful, youthful district, but you can see all the buildings, they are very open, very enclosed. They are very internalized. So what we're trying to do here, open up this corner and bring people in. Just now the access, this little hole here is the access from the SOTA to our school to meet its way to our new Greek mall. Uh, you will be opening soon. So we are all quite excited to see how it works with the people and how it fostered a new youth community in the area. So um, I think that's all for our introduction of today. Um, the six strategies where we mentioned how Spark bring people together um, with our different projects. And the last thing we want to share is that uh, yesterday we saw this little poster here online and we understand actually this is your last week before Christmas. So to end this lecture, uh, we have this little Christmas card for you. Uh, so thank you for having us and have a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wing. That was so good. And thank you for the Christmas card. I love it. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? Um, we still have 15 minutes. Um, I have one quick question. Um, since you said a lot of your stuff's conceptual, um, how, do, how do you go about your business? Do you Do you have clients approach you for most of your designs or do you create a concept and propose it to a client? Um, I think uh, business at our projects comes in many different ways. Sometimes, yes, a client comes and approaches us and asks us to do something for them. And sometimes, as you can see, some of the projects we show today, they're actually, they're actually no client, and then we just do them, and then um, we, we put them on different social media and start to stir a discussion and then we get some kind from that process. So yeah, to answer your question, it just come in many different ways, maybe from a friend or from, from my ex-colleague, it usually come, yeah, so. Yeah. Hi, Roger. Hi. Um, hi, uh, I have a question. Do you uh, enter architecture competitions? Do you, do you get any of your projects to a competition with your concepts or <coughs> something too far-fetched? Uh, we do, we do <coughs> enter architecture competitions. And in fact, some of the projects we showed just now, uh, some are competition entries and some are competition entry uh, winners. Uh, so yes, we, we do do that. And uh, I think nowadays that's uh, entering competition is quite an important way to secure projects. Okay, thank you.
Um, yeah, thank you so much for your time, Wing. Um, I think we'll probably end it here as like most students, I think they have to go back to lectures now. Um, but yeah, it was such a great talk from you. Um, we really appreciate your time and you showing um, us all these amazing things. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having us. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.